by default you always have these two they they are mutually exclusive so you press this it it turns off that right each one of these can turn on and off by itself okay then Tekken um, ILS so everything works okay we have all these indicator lights on um, the, the landing light all this on obviously I didn't wire this so everything else is on as we turn let's say 254 say 525 254525 okay 254525 hey guys welcome back to simpin academy today we look at nmsp and the uhf repeater so starting with nmsp I have chosen this biggest um, light switch okay with a push button and it will light up so as usual I tried many options this one which I used extensively in the F15 Strike Eagle build this is a bit too small okay this one 18 by 18 doesn't seem a lot of difference but it does um, the size is just right okay this one I feel is too small I also tried um, doing like a light block right then drill a small hole for the dome shape um, this piranha flux something and then putting on top of a button and the result is very wobbly um, just doesn't feel right this was to save height okay um, but I didn't like it so this one you can see because it's because the length would be quite long as well um, you need a top panel and then you need the back plate and also need to raise it a lot so it seems ridiculously um, tall but if when you put it horizontally when you sit down in front of it and it is coming towards you horizontally it's not so noticeable and plus it's at the bottom so uh, kind of out of the way so um, I don't know it doesn't bother me right the build the way I've built this is that I use one big super wide monitor to cover end to end from the left side the um, the flaps all the way to the right fill quantity so a lot of people use multiple um, smaller monitors just to avoid HCP avoid this avoid that you know um, I build everything on top of the monitor so nothing can protrude into the monitor so the only way like the HCP or the landing gear is to build up right and I don't really care how high I have to build as long as the the legs of the switches don't scratch the monitor then we are fine okay so this is my preference so um, when you put a switch they have you secure it here and then the this top part here will protrude out a little bit as we'll see okay so we have a base um, we put the light here so we take out this metal protection take out this thing just using this um, we use this to secure the switch at the bottom okay so it doesn't drop out um, the top there is like a lead or ring here this will prevent it from falling down okay falling into the hole so this is bigger than the hole um, the shaft so from here onwards to here will be above this back plate all right so you need to later do the top panel it will be quite tall too okay so we have 
are eight holes here. The the red one, the corner ones are to secure this back plate to your front panel board, right? And then the blue ones inside are to um secure it with the top panel, right? If you only have one set, then this thing can move and you need screws on top and below um, to prevent this from moving and they will come loose and all kinds of problems. So I, I use two different set of holes. Okay, so these are standard size. Um, 20, 21 mm. The 16.5 is the size of the hole that is just nice. And then this needs to be bigger for um, the whole body of the toggle switch to go through. Okay, the, the, the toggle switch will not be here. You'll be actually floating above. So this is just for it to pass through. All right, then these are the homing lights, uh, which you will see. We need to, at the end, we need to fillet this one and a half mm uh, radius. Okay, so anyway, here you we built a fence. Okay, to save material, I just made a very thin, I think one, two mm. Okay, two mm wide um, to raise the whole thing so that the legs of the switch will not hit the monitor. All right, see, 17 mm, quite a big one. And then on the top of the back plate, you need to have a flat top screw, okay? Then the top panel can sit flush with it. If it's protruding like a normal screw, which is dome shape, then you need to uh, drill a hole underneath the, the top panel. So anyway, this is the easiest one. You countersunk um, this hole here first let's say this is 3.6 right the whole size which is standard for my uh, 632 uh, size screw then you take a bigger drill bit and drill about this size okay and then let it go in as far as possible then it becomes kind of flush okay flat then the top panel can just sit on top and then secure it to this screws here. All right, so back back plate is done. Um, top panel, top panel. Okay, this example is red. Uh, all the switches are actually green. So we, as I mentioned, the lid is sitting here, and this whole thing is quite big. So you, this has to be eight and a half mm. And still the top, without this metal thing, right, and the black thing, this switch here will sit about 3 mm above this, okay? It's not flush, it's not flat. You, you, you want it to protrude out a little bit to help you, like, press it. Um, and also just looks nice, okay? Then you add some um, text here. So... I had to experiment. So usually when you are not sure of the size, uh, you don't want it to be too loose, you don't want it to be too tight. Um, 10.65, it's the right one for this light to go through, not wobble around at, you know, too loose and not get stuck as well. So normally I just create a test hole. Um, and then print it and then fit it and try you know a lot of things are try and error so um yeah the width everything is fine so the toggle this is just the the shaft of the toggle underneath you need to create a recess for the body to go in a little bit so that the shaft can protrude out enough and also you should create locking hole and use the locking ring so that the toggle doesn't rotate and become loose. Um, 
and you best practice is to put both. Okay, this is a two way switch. That means just on off. So your toggle ring and and normally the toggle has three legs, right? You are not sure which of the outer legs is the is the correct one. So it's best to create both, and then you can just swap the locking hole around. Now this one is also to um, have some recess. Then we'll see the homing lights later. You can just push it in and you will stick out a bit more. Okay. So next, um, each of the button need a cover. I experimented with this thing up to with a fence, like the whole cover, like a bottle cap, right? Um, but to print it, it will create a lot of support underneath. If you flip it around with the text here at the bottom, it will normally somehow the result will not be so nice. Okay, the text um will be rough. So I will print a common cover at the the four sides and then stick it underneath this thing here okay this one i also experimented with clear with with this cut out just like this um at the end i settled for the triangles being cut out to let the light through but the text are not cut out the text i don't let the light through right um i just emboss it and print it white so during daytime i can read it um, normally when you have a cutout, um, the text is not obvious without light. So I want the light to be up, the text to be obvious. So I emboss and paint it white. Okay. Now the, um, the NMSP, some of this, three of them are like, um, they have two triangles and then some of them only have one triangle. Okay. Um, you'll see in the demo later so it's optional you can have only one or some of them have two so the way I did this was you have a triangle and then you put lines and you crop it okay if you are not sure how to do trimming look at my um, F15 E playlist the first few videos I showed in great detail even showed in demo how to do the trimming so you you have to you, you cannot trim the whole thing it will fall through right this this thing will fall through so you have this support structure then you you also my my many other videos I've shown how to create this cutout okay you have one body and a shape and then you merge them and you cut out. Um, then you do another set. You cannot do all two triangles at the same time. Do one big one, uh, combine with the body, do a cut out in um, the part workbench and then do another smaller set of triangles and cut out. All right. So the light will go through. This should be painted black. I made a mistake of not painting. You will see in the result. There's some light uh, bleed. Even though I spray painted it like two, three times. Okay. Um, so if you print in black PLA, it's going to be very opaque and the light will not go through at the side. Right. So this is the size. Okay. Um, then this is the cover I was talking about. Just print this cover and then put this thing, stick it over this cover. Okay, for each one of them. So you first pre create this head a little bit, then create a fence, okay, uh, which is slightly thinner, and then pad it, then you get this. Now, the homing lights, um, UHF, FM, the way I did it is one piece, okay? Then I create two towels, add some text, 
um, I made a rim such that they are raised 1 mm just like the text. So this is black. Uh, spray painted the whole thing black when you file the text the paint on the text get filed away and so does the ring so that you will have a glow at the ring here okay this is optional if you don't want the ring then only raise the text don't raise the 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 outer edge so we have the text and the ring um the rim will have um, the light will light up okay then this will be black the this part here will be black okay and then this whole thing you just stick it to um, to this thing here okay so um, at the back you need to create a recess for the light um, I recommend using the dome shape um, piranha like flux thing okay it's very bright and it spreads the light very well if you use those typical long thin LEDs it's still quite bright not as bright and it's very directional so it doesn't really spread you want only one light okay very easy so um, to spread around so that piranha light flux thing is um, ideal Okay, obviously you still have to do the resistor and put it in the right side, on, on the right side, like on the, the positive, okay, the anode side, not the cathode negative side. So look at my previous videos on how to wire LEDs um, with resistors. I've shown many examples. So for the big light switch, um, it has light and push button built in. You look at this and what NO, NC, whatever. NC normally closed, NO normally open. For we are using normally open, right? When you press it, then it becomes closed, then it emits the light. So you want NO. Then this is common, C for common. This is negative ground. So these two, you don't need two wires. You just need one and then join them together. Okay, so you have one going to your Arduino. Then this one is your switch, your Hars, Eggy, um, ILS, Tekken, whatever. Okay, one pin in each switch. Then here is the positive, the corresponding light. Okay, let's say you are doing harsh and then this one go to the harsh light pin okay note i have it positive here just to indicate that this is a like a light combination you don't connect it to the vcc or vin or 5 volt or 3 volt okay don't connect to those connect to a normal pin like your pin 2 3 4 5 stuff like that okay so as you'll see here, these are all the buttons, okay, for all these blue ones, all right, all the, the buttons, and then all the light switches here, you see a normal pin, okay, it, it can be A something, can be analog, that on the Arduino, the digital pins and the analog pins can be used as digital, but the analog pins can only be analog. If you are using potential meters, you have to use the A series. You cannot use the digital pins. All right. So here I ran out of the digital pins. I'm using the analog pins as digital, like a normal two, three, four, five. So here, the this one um, for each of the light, okay, as a pair to this. So what I have skipped is the TISOL. I didn't wire the button or the light. Okay, it's totally non-functional. You have the physical, physical button here, but you press it, it doesn't do anything. No button function, no light function. Okay, just for sure. So also you notice that this, this, this have two triangles. This uh four have only single triangle so we are done with the code this code um 
the LEDs are all using the old format. Okay, um, you can copy the same. So if you download from DCS BIOS uh, website, they are probably not going to give it to you in this old format. Okay, uh, even board are I think started using the new format and you may not be able to find the old format anymore. The new format will be um, a macro and then in your sketch Arduino scratch you have to declare um, the address file for it to know each of the name what is the actually the actual old code all right um, again a few of my previous videos have explained that macros uh, for LED lights look at look at those you will understand what I'm saying so we are done with NMSP um, UHF okay this one 1306 OLED it's the ideal size okay um, it's less than two dollars okay maybe a, a, another dollar or two more for shipping okay but it's it's very cheap and only four pins I like this just like the CMSC right um, this I squared uh, C type of displays are super easy always a data SCK SCL are all the same clock right one is data one is clock it's always pin 20 and 21 for the mega okay I I don't use uno or those other the mega has the is the best value right the most number of pins so Normally, you might be using pin 20, 21 for switcher stuff like that. But for this, if you are trying to do the UHF repeater, you have to use 20 and 21 for SDA, SCK. So you cannot use it for other panels. Okay, cannot use it for other switches. Um, and also, CMSC uses this to sda sck right so you need a different mega for this oled uh display right the front panel requires at least two megas hardly enough all right so don't fight don't i'm not sure whether you can share sda scl um date um lines okay i not even going to bother since i need two megas anyway one mega will use the data and clock for CMSC. Then the other one, I use it for this UHF repeater. Now, this guy, um, he has a website. And when you use his code, it will display his name, all right, which is cool. Um, I... I give credit where it is due. So this guy basically he demonstrated this. You you connect the four and then you run the code and this will work. Okay, and the code is here. I will provide the link to his website in this video description. Okay, you can click on it. Um, or just search this OLED Arduino DCS BIOS, whatever you find his his um page. Okay, so this one basically it works right away. Obviously, if you are not having this standalone sketch, if you are incorporating into your own scratch sketch together with NMSP or any other panel, then you need to know where to copy and paste, right? The declare normally your DCS BIOS default serial all these are already there you so you need to add spi wire adafruit stuff like that so copy and paste uh into your own sketch and it should write it should work okay very easy kudos to to him so now the uhf repeater needs a cover and the standard cover when you try to put on it um it will not work because you need to recess to allow this thing which will protrude out 2-3 mm you need to recess it you also need to recess a bit more on one side because this 
um, this thing here, okay, um, the soldering, it's even higher than this display by a bit, okay, by an 1 mm or whatever. So I recess this like 3 mm for this, and then I recess a bit more for an three and a half um for for the soldering part okay and it's barely enough you can feel that it's very tight um so because my panel is only 4 mm thick okay um maybe you should do like five and then emboss all the way four and a half whatever so then you'll be you will have a lot of clearance okay so this is very straightforward now um i thought i was being smart and i bought this connectors with all the stuff i tried manually crimp crimping and every time cmsc or this OLED, whatever the connection is like not perfect and it will lose connection or not detect or whatever so buying a properly made one you know made it work but then when i try to put on my panel this plastic housing thing is like okay very very tall right it will protrude out the back a lot and because it has a plastic housing you cannot bend it so i abandon this i manually crimp okay um crimp one line each then this is very loose okay even you insert this um this female pin thing you insert it it's very loose i need to solder it after you solder you need to have a very thin um rubber the uh, string tube okay and then use like a hair dryer or, or heat gun and blow it and make it string and make it tight so that it will secure wrap around one is to prevent this from dropping out two is to prevent them from touching each other okay so this is the best practice for for just like the rotary encoder all right the pins are very close to each other so i used to dread wiring them now this one this way is uh, very very good um, result so this you can bend after you solder it and you um, protect it with string tube um, it's not going to drop out so easily so you put this you drew a side hole okay first i have this hole um, actually i was this original hole was to put this at the back i find that it's too far back so i decided to put it in the front so we are not using this hole and this is longer then i have another hole at the side to for the legs to go through all right and then whatever protrudes out okay maybe like half of it protrude out then i gently bend all this okay wrap around okay they go in this way then i try to bend it towards this way so that at the back is as flush as possible okay then we have this um this cover okay that is already um recessed and we put it on top okay and you see the result all right this is a bit too wide um the dimension i i gave here is already reduced um this is a bit too wide and too tall i was afraid that it will not be big enough and ended up being too big but anyway it's not obvious um when you sit one two feet away so this is the result and i know the actual one in the game is white all right i am so used to uh most of the displays in the a10 being yellow um whether seven segment or for the VHF, UHF radios, Tekken, IRS, whatever. It's always like yellow, green kind of stuff. So um, either this or this. So I, when I bought it, I didn't pay attention. 
So I should have bought the white one, but it doesn't matter. So at least this is um, still very visible. Okay. Now, um, the UHF repeater is a viewport. Okay. As seen here, the all viewports in DCS, okay, most of the time, except MFDs, um, which has a black background, most viewports, they are fine in 2D, but they are transparent in VR, okay? As you can see, the whole VR environment, when your head moves around, the, the 3D dimensional uh, environment moves around and you can hardly read. Okay, this is the CMSC, this is the RWR, the uh, UHF repeater, the clock is always too dim and you have to turn to the right and you know turn a dial and to even see it, right? So this is pervasive across v uh, DCS, so not just the A10. The F15 is having an opposite problem where everything all instruments are fine except the mpds okay um luckily i found the solution okay my previous video episode 33 for the f15e playlist has um described the solution Okay, and it works for the Hornet, the A10, the Strike Eagle, Apache, and today somebody told me uh, and thanked me for the solution because it also solved his F16 uh, viewport transparency problem. So it should work for all aircrafts. Okay, I cannot um, verify or determine because I, I don't buy all those aircrafts. So anyway, um, if you follow this solution, then you can still choose to display the UHF and even the CMSC on the monitor with a black background and both will be and the RWR. Basically, all viewports will become very readable. So you don't need to buy and build separate you know, LCDs, OLED, LEDs, whatever, for all these viewports. Okay, it's optional. It's up to you. This one, there's no choice. It has, you have to solve it um, with this because this is viewport only. This you can, as you see in my one of my videos, you can build the um, 2002 LCD and build this. This one, we can use this OLED and build this. Right, even this digital clock, if you want, you can also put it on an LCD, and all this require like DCS BIOS code. So this one there is no option at all. Luckily, we have this solution now, and then it solved this. I believe all RWRs in all aircrafts will have this transparency problem. So if you are flying VR, you will have a viewport transparency problem and uh, take a look at this and it should um, fix it okay you see the result here the this is after i apply this solution you see now this is much clearer obviously there's also a bezel that you can add but add the bezel behind put the viewport in front then it will become like this and same thing with the the clock Okay, and this is the this is not using the OLED display. This is using just the viewport. It because now it, it makes everything black. So if you are using viewport only, the text, the white text for the UHF will also be visible. Okay, or you can choose to have something like this. Okay, it's challenging. It's fun. So it's all up to you. Alright, so we have seen NMSP and the UHF repeater, how to build them. So now, let's take a look at them in action.
Okay, we are back here in the A10C and we have NMSP and the UHF repeater done this time. So all these displays um, have been explained in the previous video. Um, the Quest doesn't seem to pick up the contrast well, so this one looks very bright. If I move in, then you can read this a bit better. Okay, so um, let's start with NMSP. Um, we are, as usual, this series all about doing this not just to have it working in DCS BIOS but to fly in MR, right? We see the airfield around us, we see the cockpit. Um, whatever that's not passed through but remains virtual we see the um, the planes and everything so this is cool now we can see this eventually later we will add the sites uh, passed through and I'll do a video on how to merge okay doing one plane um, in the past trying to do everything the result is not good you need actually need to so okay this one um, as I said in the PowerPoint this is protruding out a lot um, but you seldom look down and even if it does I just want it to work I don't really care how much it protrudes out right as long as it doesn't it doesn't dig into the monitor uh, the legs right so everything needs to go out this way you see the HCP is also very thick obviously this is ridiculously thick but um, function over fashion so the HCP um, let's turn this off first okay the homing lights best turn off by default you always have these two they, they are mutually exclusive so you press this, it it turns off that, right? Um, this one is not functional. I didn't wire the button or the light. Each one of these can turn on and off by itself. Okay. So and these three have double triangles. The rest all have single. And see the anchor, which is uh, bullseye, right? Anchor. Then Tekken. Um, ILS so everything works okay this one also um, you have to see in here so anyway everything works here so um, next the uh, homing lights oh this one sometimes they also switch to the other right except these two so anyway I like the the size it's just nice and the click everything um, feels perfect so now the homing lights, this is UHF, FM, UHF first, we go to UHF and um, the the font is very low resolution so it's hard to read. It's, this one actually means ADF, so when you turn on ADF, okay, this UHF light comes on. So you are navigating by ADF which I think is very old technology. Um, so turn it off um, next we want to look at FM here is the FM uh, this used to be AM right now up to 10 this is still the old VHF so here again um, the font is not good you switch up to this one called DF and your FM light will come on all right Turn it off now to if you do light test here all the NMSP lights including the homing lights will come up all right let's do that we have all these indicator lights on um, the, the landing light all this on obviously I didn't wire this so everything else is on all right 
next uh, UHF repeater here uh, default 251 so here 251 as we turn let's say 254 say 525 254 525 okay 254 525 so it's the change is instant all right so um you guys also notice um that now the rwr is uh, readable okay um, before that it was transparent two things help one is have a bezel um, the clock as well uh, both now you can add the bezel but put the viewport in front because the bezel is not transparent um, put the viewport in front of the bezel um, and also as I mentioned in the PowerPoint um, the fix with the, the the VR mirror thing um, this has been replaced with an LCD and this with an OLED but before that this 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 and even the NMSP if you are using viewport and the up to 10 uh, everything that is viewport in the A10 in VR were not readable same thing for the other few aircrafts that I've checked and uh, now we have a fix for it all right so um, check out episode 33 of the um, F-15 strike eagle playlist and that is a solution to fix viewports in all aircrafts so with um, all this completed we will be doing the UFC and the glacial um, later. So other than that, the front console is um, complete. And when you add in the hotes, stick and throttle, and the MFDs especially, um, we can um, get a lot of things done. All right, so um, please support my channel, um, subscribe and share the videos so that more people can um, learn how to build panels, enjoy um, the aircrafts in uh, mixed reality and whatever solutions that we look at here uh, should apply to other aircrafts too, whether learning 3D printing, um, you know, DCS BIOS, displays, input, output, whatever. Um, these are very common and universal. So, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.